Christmas. All right, winter time. All right, amen. Good to see you uh, this morning. Glad you're here. And uh, <clears throat> look forward to God speaking to our hearts from his word. And uh, I want to read something to you before I forget so I can go ahead and uh, take this off. Um, uh, this is a blessing that I want you to pray for because I'll, I'll forget it if I don't tell you because I don't have it written down. Um, I uh, mowed Amy uh, Rose's grass on uh, Thursday, just her front, and I knew that rain was coming in on Friday. And uh, to be honest with you, I really didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot of dust, and, and I was already clogged up with different stuff, but knew that the Lord wanted me to do it. And so that's what's important, right? And uh, so went over and uh, mowed the grass. Only Again, just the front part there. And I already decided that I'm not going to charge her for this. You know, it's just fruitless, you know, to charge for this little bitty thing here. And so I knew I'd have to run from her <laughs> to not charge her. And uh, so I, I said, hey, I said, it's on the house. You know, I said, I'm not going to charge you. And she said, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. She had her checkbook out. And um, I said, yeah, I can do. And just kept on walking. And I just, out of the whim, folks, wasn't thinking about this at all. I said, hey, I, I said, I did it for one church visit. You know, she said, oh, that's not fair. That's not right, you know. And I said, well, too bad. I said, that's my, that's my service for one church visit. And this is what I got from her. Thank you again for mowing today, quote, unquote, on the house. I appreciate you. I have a question. Do any women wear pants for Sunday church? I said, to God be the glory. Sometimes you are welcome to wear whatever you want. Relief explanation point. Sometimes I wear a dress in the summer, but wasn't even sure if I still have one for cooler weather. This is a very welcoming church policy. I said, absolutely fine. Church starts at 11. Thank you. I promise I'll think about it maybe closer to Christmas. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. Right amen. there. Wouldn't it be thrilling to see somebody, a Jewish lady, Come to Christ. Amen. All because of just God. Again, somebody saying, do you mow yards? <laughs> that's my neighbor. Huh? That's your neighbor? Yeah. Close to, she's close to you. I'll get her. Jim <laughs> <laughs> said that he would get her. I will get her here. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Amen. All right, Jim. Praise God. So God brought you here, and you're going to bring somebody else. Well, we go voting together. We might as well go to church together. I hear you. All right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So lift that up to the Lord in prayer. That was such a blessing. And uh, you just never know where they're going to come from, right? Amen. Let's pray. Father, grateful for who you are. Thank you, God. Again, we have no clue, but you know. Just a little act of kindness. And really, we should be a lot kind, Father. You said be kind, tenderhearted one to another. <clears throat> Loving one another, forgiving one another. Even as Christ, even as Christ has forgiven us. And so we pray, God, you'd help us with that. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with Amy, God help her, Father. You know what she needs. And Lord, we just pray that everything we do and say, again, would be pleasing unto you today. Speak to our hearts through your word. And Father, may we uh, lift Christ high in our songs and in sermon. Thank you again for this day, and thank you for giving us the help and strength to be able to be here. Pray this in Christ's wonderful name for his sake. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
and turn to page 675. I gave my life for thee. Let's stand and sing all four verses, please. Page 675. <coughs> safety organization is the Bond Lee Police Department, and uh, so uh, pray for these folks if you would. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, today will be choir practice. That's not in your bulletin, but we have choir practice today at 4.30. Uh, next uh, Sunday, we do things a little different. We'll have Sunday school. Uh, we'll have a Thanksgiving meal after the service, the 11 o'clock service. There's a sign-up sheet, just like the one we normally do on Tuesday nights for meats, vegetables, and things like that, and uh, so sign up for that today and uh, get some things on there for us, and uh, we look forward to that, and uh, then right during that meal, uh, we're going to go back 2,000 years ago, and uh, we're going to have communion service during that meal, and uh, and so just pray the Lord to work all those things out, the details, and uh, look forward to that, and there won't be an evening service. And then our midweek service won't be on Wednesday. <clears throat> next week. Um, it will be on Tuesday, just like we normally have, and just be a normal prayer meeting service on that Tuesday. So we look forward to that. Pray that you'll be able to uh, participate and uh, change that over. You know, uh, some of our seniors, some others can't come on Tuesday, and so I just felt like the Lord wanted us to do that. thought it'd be a nice uh, way to uh, have communion with it, too, and so uh, we'll see what God does with it, and just excited about that. Again, glad that you're here. <clears throat> oh, one more thing. Sorry about that. Let me read this to you. Uh, we gave some things to the uh, uh, the rescue mission uh, in Durham uh, to help them with meals and different things. And so 
what they did is they had some of the men there that have been blessed uh, there to, to write cards back uh, to those that have uh, donated. And I thought that was a real good blessing. Uh, so this is from a man. Um, he says, Dear Mr. Smith, my name is Stephen Gulliver, and I would like to thank you for supporting the Durham Rescue Mission. Your support helped change my life. Thank you, Stephen Gulliver. So we're appreciative of that and uh, some of the funds, again, that you give. Uh, we were able to help out and uh, give uh, meals. I can't remember how many meals it was that we were able to give. And, uh, but again, this is uh, uh, one of those things that uh, we need to be more thoughtful of, especially during the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, people that are less fortunate than us. And, uh, and again, we need to think about, uh, but by the grace of God, right? You and I would be out there in the street somewhere if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. And, and it's so easy to criticize, isn't it? People, and, and again, we just, I understand there are, and we're going to talk about that in the 11 o'clock uh, message, you know, there, there's people, we, we have created a society of laziness, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Haven't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, handouts and all this stuff, and people don't want to work and all that. But that doesn't mean we need to hard our hearts, right? Amen. We need to learn how to be kind and loving and, and allow God to guide us and direct us of how we give and things like that. And uh, But you can't you can't outgive God. Amen. Amen. And, uh, for what? Did you, you heard that song, right? <laughs> Boy, all the things that he's done for us, really, what are we doing, what are we doing for him? And uh, it's convicting. And uh, I was telling the Sunday school class, and we'll get to singing here, but this morning, you know, it's easy to be mediocre be a mediocre Christian and really be above average in today's Christianity. It just is, folks. We live in a day that just anything goes, and so you could just be mediocre and still people think you're a great Christian. You know, God help us, right? Uh, we need God to, to move upon our hearts and our lives.
Let's take our hymn books as the choir comes down, please, and turn to page 560. More about Jesus. Let's stand up all four verses, please. Page 560. <laughs> Savor and speak to her uh, heart and salvation, and uh, <clears throat> uh, continue to pray for uh, uh, Patrick's uh, father, George Pierce, and his eye, and continue to heal. Um, mentioned this morning, Diane Hornsby, we want to pray for her, uh, that God would touch her and uh, heal her. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Also, uh, Patrick's uh, little girl, baby girl, Linda, is uh, also sick, so we want to pray for her. It is Linda, right? Yes. I should be able to remember that since I have a sister with her. Uh, but anyway, let's pray for her. Um, uh, uh, Tim mentioned uh, Annette Block. Uh, is that right? B? V? V. Yeah. Vanette. Okay. All right. Vanette. All right. Let me change that. Vanette Block. Uh, it was cancer. And then. Um, his name is slipping me right now, but um, um, Ron Smith and Sarah Smith, Sarah's dad, you know, that we've been praying for him for years as far as uh, being saved. And um, he's got some problems, some fluid and things, and it looks like uh, could be cancer. So they're praying there. Uh, you know, that they're praying that it wouldn't be cancer, but uh, we certainly need to pray that maybe this would be something to speak to his heart, that uh, he realized that uh, he's not going to live forever, and uh, he needs to be saved and praying for him for years, and um, I'll try to get his name. Do you remember his name, um, Jesse? Um, anyway, I got an email from him this week, and uh, so pray for Sarah's 
father. It's an um, interesting name, I think. Uh, so just pray for the physical condition, but pray um, most of all for his sal salvation. Uh, continue to pray for Billy Phillips. Continue to lift him up to the Lord in prayer. Continue to pray for <clears throat> Judson. Uh, pray for the Martins. Uh, flu's gone through them, all their family. And so just pray uh, God would uh, again touch them. If you would. All right. Any others? All right. Have yes, Lisa. Um, Randy and I have a great, great nephew. Um, his name is Nolan Edwards. He is five years old. Is that how old Nolan is? Um, he swallowed a one of the little disc batteries. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, like a watch battery. Mm -hmm. And it lodged um, you know, in his esophagus, so they had to do emergency surgery Friday night to get that out, which they did, but his, because of the battery, his esophagus was burned um, pretty bad, so he's going to be in the hospital for at least another six days um, for healing for that. Um, so just pray for healing for him and mom and daddy, because they have three other little boys at home, and Certainly, prayer for Nolan Edwards. Yeah, he's at um, Brenner's. Brenner's in Lexington. Okay. All right. We'll certainly lift him up and the family. Anybody else? Oh, sorry. It's Lucy. <laughs> Jesse was pointing at you, and I'm going, uh, uh, yes. Paul, will, Paul will be going back on Thursday. Thursday. Carolina I. Lucy's back. Can you lift her up and her back? All right. All right, Brother Paul, you pray for us, please, sir, if you would. Father, we, we thank you for, first of all, for your saving grace, Lord, and mm -hmm. for your presence in our midst, because you've said in your word, where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'll be there in their presence. We thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we might be aware of your presence. Lord, there's so many prayer requests that we have. We've said over and over again that it's, it can be overwhelming to us as human beings, the things that are going on in life and the things that we need to pray for. But the one thing that we need to be assured of, it, Lord, that uh, oh, even though it may be overwhelming for us, it isn't for you. Amen. And as you said in your word, there's nothing that's too hard for you. Mm -hmm. So Lord, help us to have confidence that when we pray that you have the ability. Lord, if we pray for something that no one has the ability for, then there's no hope. But as long as we pray, Lord, there to you for an answer, Lord, there is hope. And Lord, we thank you for that hope. And we thank you for the, the faith that we have to receive from you the things that you have promised, Lord, in your word. Lord, we just pray for each one of those that has been requested. There are many, and I'm not going to even try, attempt to, to recall, but you know exactly who they are. For those that weren't even mentioned, those that are in someone's heart, Lord, you know about those as well. And we thank you, Lord, for the answer that you will give, which will be the right answer. Right. Lord, we don't. Sometimes we pray for something and we don't see what we ask for, but you have sometimes a better answer. Mm. And Lord, we thank Help you us. for your answer, which is the the one that's important. Yes. We pray for each one that's here today, Lord. We pray that they might receive from you the message that is for them, Lord. And I pray that especially for myself, Lord, that if there's something, Lord, that is in your your word that I need to know, help me, Lord, to see it. And then help me, Lord, to be obedient to it. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. You should turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 4. Uh, you know, it's a blessing to be reminded of people that have been in your life. Uh, 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 Pastor Bobby Robertson was my pastor for a long time, and uh, he actually married uh, Karen and I, and um, I've told you this before, some of his statements that he made, one of them just came, two of them just came back to my mind, and he wasn't original with these probably, uh, but you know, he said, God's not in heaven taking a tranquilizer. <laughs> Aren't you glad that's so true? Amen. Amen. And uh, I thought about, um, you know, preparation, 
you know, we we're prepare for things. And how many of you have prepared for something, you know, and you, you, you did your due diligence, you know, you really prepared for it. And then it came time and, and, and something, it was something there that took you off guard. That it, you just didn't think about that thing. And uh, it ended up being, you know, ah, not what you thought it would be. It didn't work out quite, you know, the way you uh, thought you were prepared for it. You thought, man, I looked at everything. I, I thought I uncovered every stone and all those kind of things. Another statement that uh, uh, Pastor Bobby uh, Robertson said was, has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? <laughs> that's just a great statement. Listen, God doesn't ever say, oops, I, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. Now, folks, listen, this is, this is as comforting as it gets. Amen. That, that, that what Paul just prayed there, that God, God knows. That, that's, boy, that's so foreign to us because we can prepare and we can do everything possible and it still not work out the way we thought it would work out. But that ain't the way it is with God. Amen. And aren't you glad again that he's our God, that he's in control and that he does answer in the way that he chooses. And sometimes we don't understand that and why's and all that. But at the end of the day, God is in control. Amen. And we can be thankful for that. Amen. As you look in your Bibles, this... This may be the last message on what we've been looking at. The heart of the matter is the heart matters. And it may not be. <laughs> it just depends. But we're going to divide this into a couple subjects today. Uh, and I think I got four of them uh, that we want to look at from, again, the, the standpoint of your, your mind, your emotions, and your will and how they affect us. Now, you're going to do a lot of turning today in the scriptures, New Testament and Old uh, to, to look at some things, and I, I believe personally, I, well, I know they are, all of us have these problems that we're going to look at today, okay, in one way or another. But ultimately, the verse of Scripture that we want to continue to go back to is, keep thy heart, guard it, watch over it, with all diligence, okay? Put an effort to it, right? Your mind, your emotions, and your will. For out of it are the issues of life, Proverbs 4, verse 23. And so we... we, we think that we understand this, um, that uh, it starts right where? Where does everything start? In the mind. It's, it's your thought life. And then it, it, it trickles down to the emotions, and, uh, and then it affects the choices that we make. And we have to be so careful uh, in this world, uh, in the choices that we make. And, and so uh, we're going to look at um, three things today. Uh, oh, four things, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to look at envy, okay? Have any of you ever been envious in your life? We're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, 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 revenge or, or uh, really this thing of uh, rejoicing when things go wrong for other people. Have you ever, have you ever made this statement to people? Um, and I, now I can't even think of the statement that you have made to people before. It just went right out there in space. Um, well, you're, you're only getting what you deserve. You know, we kind of have a something with inside of us to like, yeah, I knew that that was going to happen to him. Well, you're going to find out that's not good, according to the Bible. Okay? And then we're also going to talk about laziness. Now, that's a good subject, isn't it? Uh, laziness. And then we're going to try to finish up uh, in, in, in uh, the passage of Scripture here with friendship. And uh, what did it mean? What does it mean? What does the Bible say about being a friend and, and, and those things? But first, look with me, if you would, at Proverbs 23 in verse 17. And then we're going to uh, go through several passages of Scripture dealing with this particular subject. Uh, the Bible um, is so clear on this, it, shouldn't, uh, it should be clear to us uh, since the Bible talks about it quite often. Proverbs 23 and verse 17. Again, the heart of the matter is the heart of matters. Let not, okay, thine heart, there's the word, envy sinners. Contrasting, but be thou in fear of the Lord all the day long. It doesn't get any clearer than that, does it? It said, let not thine heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. 
And so God says here, within us, uh, there's going to be, obviously God wouldn't have to command this or tell us this if there wasn't envy in us, right? Amen. And so, again, where does envy start? Starts in the head, starts in the mind. And then it leads to our emotions. Then it leads to the choices that we make. I told the young people, and I might have told you here, uh, and, and I haven't seen one recently, but I was seeing them quite often over and over again uh, for this particular car that they're just, it's over and over and over again. The Buick starts with an E. Enclave, see? And uh, some of you that watch TV or see commercials on the internet or something, that Buick Enclave, you know, it's such a, everybody needs this car. One of the commercials was like this. The, the, the husband and the wife uh, were both out driving uh, their Buick Enclave, and uh, they went to the PTA meeting, and uh, they came home, and uh, whoever it was, the kid said, the PTA meeting was over like an hour or so ago. Uh, but they were both out driving and experiencing the Buick Enclave. And everybody needs a Buick Enclave, according to the commercial, right? And uh, what, are, what are they doing? They're, they're playing on us. They're playing on our mind, our emotions, and our will. Then you go buy one of these things, and then it comes out, and you're like, man, it's a sorry car, <laughs> you know. But it sure didn't look like one. Everybody wanted one, right? And uh, that's what happens. And that's what happens when it comes when we begin to view uh, sinners' lives. And, and we see that, man, they seem to have it all together until we look under the surface, right? They seem to have everything um, uh, that you could possibly want. And so we begin to be envious of that. And so let's first of all, we're going to turn in the Old Testament, since we're already there, and then we're going to turn to the, the New Testament and look at several passages of Scripture 3, as a matter of fact, uh, in the New Testament when it comes to this thing of envy. Now, we're all like this. And this particular psalm is, uh, it is in Psalm 73, and this is, this is Asaph. Now, who knows who Asaph is? Anybody know who Asaph is? It's okay. <laughs> Paul says, I should know. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know if I wouldn't have studied for the mess. Well, I would maybe, who knows. But anyway, Asaph is a psalm leader. He was a psalm leader of David. He was this, this person, and that's why you'll see his name in these psalms. And so when you think about a psalm leader, what should you think about? I'm sorry, I put you on the spot here. Lead songs. Lead songs with this. Again, I've said this before. I remember at, at um, uh, where was I? Somewhere. Uh, 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 I think it was at Lighthouse Baptist Church, you know, where, where Avery used to lead the music. He's the pastor there now, and, and, and he, would have, he would have to, he, he didn't have to, but he, he, he would have to tell the, 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 the singers, uh, the choir members, to, to smile. <laughs> That's just insane, isn't it? The, choir, the songs that we're singing in the choir, have you listened to the songs? They're not songs of, of sadness and downness, you know. I mean, we're singing about our Lord. We're singing about all the good things of God, and we're up there like we got crab apples in our pocket. That's not good, is it? So again, a, 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 a song uh, a leader and, and song, people that sing songs, they, they, they uh, should, should have merriment, okay? There should be some joy in it, amen? <laughs> oh, me. Y'all still have that extra hour of sleep. It's only a week ago, I think, that it happened. And uh, so God help us. Let's look at Asaph. And notice what he says here. And y'all think you're going to like this. He says, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Right? He says, God is good to Israel. And he's good to those... Um, uh, that are of a clean heart are, are these, are these <clears throat> excuse me, clean of heart. But as for me, there's that contrast. But as for me, who's he talking about? This is not a trick question. He's talking about himself. But as for me, the song leader, 
the one again that that is, is before the people to to encourage them and to 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 have, smile himself and to help the others to smile and have joy. He said, "But as for me, my my feet were almost gone. Aren't you glad that's there? Amen. They were almost gone. My step uh, steps my steps." had well nigh slipped. Let's look at verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now, we're not living in that day. Are we not living in that day today? Now, folks, listen. Aren't you glad the Bible is true? Amen. Now, the Bible tells us plainly. It, it's, it's clear, clear, clear what the problem is, but we just don't get it, do we? The Bible says this, and you know, I know you can quote it. The love of money is what? The root of all evil. And where it says that there, in some translations, of various kinds, of every kind of evil. Do you realize that's what you'll find? Even behind good things, folks. I told the young people again this morning that there was a fad. I guess it was when they were babies, you know. It's probably been at least 15 years ago or so. Uh, this WWJD, the bracelets, the necklaces, and all that. It's a fad. It was a money-making fad. It's a good way to make money. Did we get any better for it? No, they just tried to go the ways of the world to try to get people to do what Jesus would do. And we just need to follow the Bible, don't we, right? For, for, again, so, so the psalmist here, Asaph, he, he's looking and he's envious. Where is he envious? In his mind, in his emotions, in his heart. And he's telling us plainly, it almost cost him his own life. Because he looked at these people in their prosperity. He said, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Now, <laughs> oh, well, that's another subject. We just need to keep going. They are not in trouble as other men. They can seem to get by with anything. Are we living in that world today? Of course we are, but folks, they're not getting by with anything. God's in control. He said, neither are they plagued like other men. He said, therefore, pride compasseth them about as a, as, a, as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. It's a continual, isn't it? Right? He said, they are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. <laughs> wow. This is a wow moment, isn't it? This is exactly where we are today. We see all this, and you know what it does to us? It makes us mad and angry and upset. Let's just be truthful about it, right? Right? It's just true. He said that they, uh, they are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens. Their tongue walketh through the earth. <coughs> Therefore, his people return hither, and, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doth God know? And there's their knowledge in the Most High. Behold, these are ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. And I've, and, excuse me, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Now, this sounds like this man, Asaph, who's the singer, is saying, What's the use? I've done all the right things and all these different things and it ain't going right for me. But out there, man, these people are living it up. So it seems. And I'm looking at them. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Man's having a difficult time. <laughs> he's looking at the sinful world. His focus is all messed up. He's got his eyes on the here and now, like you and I do. 
He begins to be envious. He's already told us that he is. How come everything goes right for me? Uh, goes right for them, but nothing seems to go right for me, God. Y'all never been there before, have you? God help us. Until. Don't you like that word? Until. I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Did you realize the importance? Now, again, he, he's speaking of the sanctuary here, but I'm speaking of the church. <laughs> you realize how important church is? And going to the right church and hearing the right things? Somebody say amen right there. God has not called us, folks, as a church. Now, there's issues in life that we need to face and we need to talk about. And we need to, we, we need to hit them. But ultimately, what we need to hit is Christ and God and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and what God has planned. And, and our future looks bright no matter what is bright. It doesn't just look bright. It is bright no matter what's going on in the world at all times. It don't matter. And so we don't need to be looking at them. We need to be looking at him. Amen? Amen. And this is what happens with Asaph, and this is what needs to happen with you and I when we're envious, when we have the wrong view. He, says, I, I, he said, I, I see their end. He said, surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou casting them down into destruction. How are they brought down into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakens, so, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. Now, folks, he's not talking about he and man. He's talking about he and his God. You see, he's talking to God in this way. And by the way, folks, listen. God already knows all these things. And boy, we ought to be honest before God. Before we're honest before anybody else. We need to be honest with God. God knows that when we're envious. God knows when these things are going on that we don't understand. And, uh, but, but God wants us to be a, bring us to a recognition just like he did to Asaph when he comes to God. And, and he says, oh my goodness, it's one of these moments. God, I looked all around me. I saw all these things and all this, what was going on, and I put you out of the equation. Do you realize we do that almost every day? If not every day. We forget that, again, there's more to life than this life. There's eternal life. There, there's something greater, and yet... We still go back because it's the nature of us. He said, so foolish was I. I was like the beast. I was ignorant. He said, nevertheless, I can, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me with thy right hand. Now, folks, listen. I'll tell you every last one of us. I'll say amen right here for the grace and the mercy of God. Because if it was up to all of us, we would all have gone away. And we'd have all gone astray. And see, the psalmist is not saying, oh, man, praise the Lord for me that I got it. <laughs> no, he says, praise the Lord for you, God, that you got it. Amen. You're not holding on to him. He's holding on to you. Aren't you glad that you're not in slippery places? Amen. Aren't you glad that he said that if any man come unto him, he would in no wise cast out? He says, no man can pluck you or me out of his hand. Amen. What a blessing. Praise God. And that's what the psalmist is really realizing here with his, with his envy that is in, in within. Now, nobody else, you know what, folks? Nobody else might know that you're envious of sinners. But God knows, right? And that's really all that matters is that God knows. We all can put on a show. We all can do things. He says here, you're, you, he said, you're, you're, you're holding me with your right hand. He said, thou, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? What a song, right? Amen. Who in heaven do I have beside thee? 
Is there, it, there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh, here it is, and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So, folks, listen, your heart's going to fail you. You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be things in your life, and, and you may come out of the service today and say, I'm never going to be envious again. Well, you've probably just lied to yourself. You have flesh, and so do I. But we need to know where to return to. Amen. We need to understand that it is foolish to be envious over people that really their end is destruction. That this is their heaven. This is all they have. And of course they're going to live it up here because that's all they have is this, unless they get saved and trust Christ. We need to recognize that. And that's what the psalmist did. He says, verse 27 and 28, For lo, they are far from thee, shall, for, though, for lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But, contrasting, it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all his works. Amen? And so when, 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 you're, when you're, you're, your mind and your emotions get envious of the sinners and what's going on in the world, you need to look to God. Amen? And understand that Greater is he that's in you than he's in the world, and he has a greater plan for you than all the world could offer. Just as uh, the, 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 the parable there, the story about the rich man that built bigger barns, he says, what shall a man, woman, boy, or girl, give in exchange for his soul? Right? The world's not worth it. And so we don't need to be envious. A couple scriptures that we need to turn to real quickly, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. This is the great love chapter, the great chapter on charity. And this is what the Bible says again about that perfect love, God's love in our hearts. Charity suffereth long, verse 4, and is kind. Charity envieth not. When you're walking in the perfect love of God, you have all that you need and all that you want in him. And you have no need to envy anybody or anything else. Galatians 5, verse 26. Galatians 5 and verse 26. Look what it says there. Galatians 5, verse 26. <clears throat> he said, let us, that's you and me, believers, let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Do you realize, folks, even in the spiritual realm, you can envy somebody else and how God has gifted them or blessed them. So it's not just envy for sinners. It's also envy for saved people, right? People that have different positions, God calls us all differently into different areas. And we're not to be envious of one another. We're to work together with one another. Then last of all, James 3 in verse 16. And we'll move to the next subject there of, of revenge or, or having joy when, when God brings judgment upon sinners. James 3 in verse 16. James 3 in verse 16. And this is so important about envy. He says, for where envy in and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Let me read that again. For where envy in and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. That word uh, confusion uh, means unquietness or, or turmoil. There, there's, there's things going on when we, when we envy. There's a, a battle. There's strife. And so, so God says when we have these things, uh, there, there's confusion and, and, and we don't really uh, get anything done. 
So we've got to be careful, not just in being sinners, but in being people in the work of God. And say, why can't I have that position? Why can't I be like this? No, God made you in a certain way, and he made somebody else in a certain way, and he's wanting us to work together with those gifts and talents. Amen? So we're not to envy. All right, let's go to the next one. Proverbs 24 and verse 17. Proverbs 24 and verse 17. <clears throat> This is what he says. <clears throat> Excuse me. 24, 17, he says, rejoice not. Doesn't get any clearer. He doesn't give you any kind of leeway out that you can have just, you know, a little bit of rejoicing when things go wrong for people that have done things to you. God doesn't want that. In your heart, he wants to remove it. He said, rejoice not when thine enemy uh, falleth, and he said, let not thine heart be glad when he stumbled. Now, folks, listen, can I ask you a question? Is that an easy verse or a hard verse to follow? We like it when people, our enemies, fail and fall, don't we? Don't we? I mean, come on now, y'all. Y'all a bunch of spiritual people in here that just doesn't happen to. No, 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 this is within, folks. This, and again, folks, listen. We got it. Now, we've spent a lot of weeks on this for a purpose. We've got to understand the outward acts come from this inward problem. Right? That, that's, that's the envy. It comes, it's on the inside, and it comes out in some bad way. Well, who do you think you are? <laughs> whoa, whoa. You ever had anybody say that to you before? <laughs> You're like, well, I, I didn't think I thought I was anybody. I was just trying to share something with you, you know? Right? People get upset. They get upset when sinners succeed, and they didn't get upset when saved people succeed. <laughs> That's just part of the human nature. And so, but we also rejoice, and, and we're glad when God brings judgment down on people. We got to be so careful with this, folks, the things that we say. We're not God, and we really don't know why God does what he does. Do we? But we do know that he has a purpose and a plan, and it's his own purpose and plan. I told the young people again this morning, it's amazing to me when we get the scriptures all messed up. Remember when James and John, uh, were, uh, Jesus was going to walk through there in Samaria, and they, they said, you ain't coming through here. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and James and John, this is what they said to him. You want us to call fire down from heaven like you did with Elijah and burn them all up? <laughs> now, can I ask you a question? Just like I asked the young people this morning, when the fire came down from heaven, did it burn all the people up? When, I'm talking about when Elijah, the fire came, he called the fire down from heaven. Did, did it burn everybody up? <laughs> no, it burned the water up. <laughs> it didn't burn the people up, but James and John, somehow or another, they, they got it wrong there, didn't they? <laughs> and, and you know what Jesus said to them, right? He said, you guys know what spirit you're of. Folks, listen to This is just because, this is how things start. Just because these people would not let them walk through that area. They were wanting to kill them all. Do you understand that? Is that not insane? Please say yes, it is. That's crazy, but that's where their heart was. And this is what Jesus said. You know not what spirit you're on. Are you in Bobby turn? Not so. I mean, come on. Really? You're going to kill all these people because they won't let you fall. Hey, you know, people kill people worse than that today. Over a nickel or a dime, you're going to kill somebody. That's insane. But that's the heart of man. And God says, even when your enemy, you know, don't, don't be rejoicing. Don't be glad when bad things happen to your enemy. Really? Yes. That's what God says. Let's go to the New Testament real quickly. Matthew chapter 5. And you'll see what Jesus said in the great sermon on the mount. The greatest sermon ever preached. And the greatest sermon ever lived. And the greatest one that ever lived it, the Lord Jesus. You can't live it. He's the one who has to live it through you. 
It's impossible. And that's where every man, woman, boy, or girl would come to Romans, I mean, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And they'd say, Jesus, that's impossible. And he'd say, right. <laughs> exactly. You cannot, but I can, I have, and I will in you, in your life. That's what he says. Look what he says in Matthew chapter 5, in verse 43. Ye have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Now again, this is the interpretation of what the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the times were teaching them wrongly. God never said this. He said, you've heard it has been said. They, they misinterpreted what God said. He said, but I say unto you, okay, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's amazing, isn't it? Now, let me ask you something. Anybody in here going to do that in their own strength? No, we, we. We can't even be nice to somebody that Walmart that says something ugly to us. And you think we're going to do this? No. That's the answer to that. We get upset just with simple words. Let's read that again. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wow. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> we could have preached the whole message on that, couldn't we? God help us. And he's only saying exactly what Solomon is saying in his wisdom. Again, we're not to rejoice when, 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 when people get uh, 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 answer for their, their evil and the things that they do. No, no, no. We should still have compassion. We should still have concern for people. Understand it again, but by the grace and mercy of God, we'd be in the exact same position that they are. God help us, right? We gotta, God's got, as Daryl talked this morning in open assembly, God's got to change our attitude. Amen? So God help us when it comes to this thing of, of, of revenge, and that's what it is sort of in our hearts, you know, that, hey, well, they got what they deserved, or da, da, da. And they, how many have said this? They had it coming to them. Well, aren't you glad you didn't get what had come, you had coming to you? Amen. Praise God. Everybody should say amen to that. Right? I mean, God is good. Amen. And merciful and kind and loving. He, he, should, he should have wiped us all out. Right? But he didn't. Amen. Praise his name. Now look with me, if you would, at Proverbs 24 and verse 30 and 32. Proverbs 24, and I don't think we're going to get to friendship today, but we are going to get to this one. Proverbs 24, verse 30, and uh, 30 through 32. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard, vineyard of the man void of understanding. And the word understanding there is the same Hebrew word again for heart. This man is void uh, of, of mind and emotions and, and his choices. He said, here's a man that's slothful, lazy, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles and had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. And so here's, here, here is the, 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 uh, Solomon and he, he's looking at this slothful man, this lazy man, and, and, and he, he's recognizing that there's a problem in the man's heart. He's got the wrong thoughts about life, and he's got the wrong feelings about life, and therefore his choices are, I'll just lay around and do nothing. Now that's what we, man, uh, you, the, you folks that are in your 70s and 80s today, <laughs> that are, again, not really retired, <laughs> right? Uh, today, they say that people are striving 
to retire in their late 40s and early 50s. Now, to some of you guys, this is just so foreign, right? The older people, is that not foreign to you guys? But today, it, it's a day that we, and, and why? <laughs> why? So we can do whatever we want to do. <laughs> just live it up. That's not what God's called us to do. God's called us to labor and God's called us to work. Now, if you're privileged to do that, I, I still think if you retire at 50, man, you ought to be working. Laboring, doing something for the Lord, amen. If you got that time to be able to do it, that'd be great, wouldn't it? If that's what we're retiring for, <laughs> right? I want to retire at 50 so I can do more work in the Lord's work. <laughs> and yeah, that ain't happening today. Notice something interesting here. I love this. I love these words. That's why it's so important to study words, folks. You're not going to see the word heart here in verse 32, but it's there. In the Hebrew, he said, then I saw his eye gate is going to affect his thought gate, which is going to affect his feeling gate, which is going to affect his choice gate, <laughs> is what he said. Then I saw, and I love this word, <laughs> it means to set my heart, that word, consider it well. It means to set his mind and his emotions and his will when he saw this. I looked upon it and I received instruction. That's important, isn't it? You see, he saw this man who was void of understanding of his thought life and his, his emotional life and he just lived a lazily life and again, Understand where they're coming from. These are, these are land people. This was their lifestyle, right? Land, livestock, and it's still, this is going to be the way it is for them. They're, they're land people, the Old Testament people. Y'all with me? And so they took care of things. They worked. They labored. This was a part of their life. Now, there's coming a day. Do you know if we're still going to work? <laughs> oh, Pastor, why didn't you burst my ball boy? Well, we're going to work, but we're going to work without the sweat of our brow and the sinfulness and all that kind of thing. Y'all knew that, right? Mm -hmm. You remember when God made it? We talked about this early on in Genesis when we started these messages in, in, in Genesis um, uh, chapter 3. No, no, chapter um, uh, uh, 2, I think. And uh, where he says that he, he saw all this, but there was no man to till the ground. That was before sin. It's before sin. God saw all of the things that he had created. He said, but there was no man to till the ground, to work the ground. We're going to be working, folks. Amen. But it won't be with sin. It'll be all pleasure and joy and delight. And by the way, God wants us to delight in our work today does. He doesn't want us to be lazy. And so here, that word there, that man says that he saw it and he considered it in his heart and he looked upon it. He didn't just, he didn't just take a, a glimpse. No, he it went deep in his inner being. That's really what this wording is all about. He, it, he got it. He, he said, you know what? Laziness is not for me. He said, I see what the results of it. And that's not what I want. I'll tell you, spiritually speaking, we need to see that. More so than in the physical sense. He says this in verse 33 and 34. Now, would you write these verses of Scripture down uh, for, for the New Testament, please? It's 2 Thessalonians 3.10. That's where it says, uh, Paul says that if, if a man's not willing to work, he should be able to eat. Okay? That's what he says. If a man don't work, he shouldn't be getting food. And then Ephesians 5 uh, six, five, and six is where it's talking about the servant uh, serving the master and his employee. We we call it employee and employer, and that we're not to do it with eye service. It, it needs to be when 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 he when the when the master is looking and not looking that that we're laboring, we're not lazy, we're doing the work that we're supposed to do. But let's read the rest of this passage of scripture here, and we'll close. He said, "Yet a little sleep." He didn't say a lot of sleep. He said, "A little sleep." and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, consequences, so shall thy poverty come 
as one that travaileth in thy want as an armed man. You see, folks, listen. Satan knows this, and the flesh knows this, and the world system knows this. It only takes a little to get you off, excuse me, off track. That's all it takes. Now, you realize, folks, one thought. You can have one thought. You change your whole life. You keep going in that direction. Just one thought. Satan knows this. The flesh knows this. And that's why it's not a lot of sleep. All it takes is a little. A little letting down the guard. You know, well, I won't do it today. You know? And next thing you know, leads to another. I've seen it in the spiritual realm time and time again when it comes to church and walking with God. Well, and again, I've changed in a lot of things in my mindset. I know there's times where you cannot be in church and, and, and there's other things. And so I used to be different on this in my mindset. But I do know this. One time can lead to many times. Amen. And that's where we have to be careful. Not making excuses for you know, this and this and this, and we, we need to be careful. It's not to say that, hey, you go on vacation, different things. You do whatever God would have you to do, but I'll tell you what, you need to be very careful when it comes to any spiritual thing to say, well, it's only one time, right? Because it usually leads to more. And that's exactly what the psalmist saw here when it came to laziness. So the Bible has a lot to say about envy, Right? Bible has a lot to say about this thing of, of, of wanting bad things to happen to bad people, thinking they deserve it and all that other kind of thing in our hearts, revenge. And the Bible has a lot to say about laziness and uh, slothfulness. It all starts again, folks, with the thought process. And you think these people that really think that they deserve for everybody else to pay for what they're doing or want to do, you think that happened overnight? No, it didn't happen overnight. You don't come become a lazy society overnight. It starts little by little. And then the next thing you know, bam, this is where you are. <laughs> Folks, we got to understand that. We need to be careful ourselves, right? To not allow these things and these thoughts and these feelings to control our lives. We ask, ask God to help us. Let's so stand to our feet, but the rain is going to come. This melody will sing a song of invitation. You come. I don't know if you have struggles or problems. I know at times we all do with envy. I don't know if you struggle in your heart. I don't know where your heart is when it comes to wanting bad things to happen to bad people. I don't know where you are with that. I don't know where you are when it comes to uh, laziness and choosing, you know, to let others do your work or, or, or those kind of things. And, uh, but God knows where you are in all of these things. And it may, none of them may hit you, for that good matter. If they even haven't hit you, you need to say, thanks, thank you, God, for your mercy and grace that you've got me through these things. But we all struggle. We all have battles with our, with our minds and our hearts and our choices that we make. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. We thank you for this opportunity to preach this particular message on this particular day. I pray that you'd use it in my own heart, my own life, and your people's hearts. Father, teach us to run, run, run away from self and uh, thoughts that are not pleasing to you. God, help us to trust you uh, to get us through whatever uh, we may be going through, each one of us individually. Bless your invitation. Have your own way. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 480, only trust him. 480, only trust him. You sing. Only trust him.
appreciate your good attention. I pray you'll go home and meditate upon these things and allow God to help you with them. Brother Richie, close us in prayer. God bless you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for uh, this privilege to be in the house of worship today. We thank you for our pastor being faithful to your, the leadership of the Holy Spirit to uh, preach to us on envy, Lord, and certainly we're all subject to that. And, uh, Lord, we just ask that you might uh, just uh, work through us, Lord, that we might never be desirous or envious of other people or the things that they might have. And, uh, Lord, that we might not uh, applaud and be happy uh, when uh, you allow things to come into uh, other people's lives. And, uh, and we uh, say they are getting what they deserve, Lord, and it's... We need the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, Lord, that we might never do that. And then, the Lord, help us not to be slothful. And we're so thankful that your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, wasn't slothful, that he was willing to give his life on Calvary's cross and do that finished work there, uh, Lord, on Calvary's cross when he took upon him <coughs> our sins and was willing to uh, shed his precious blood that we might have eternal life. And we're ever grateful, eternally grateful to you, Lord. And now go with us, Lord, and just watch over us and bring us back tonight, and we'll thank you and we'll praise you in all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you for Thank you, sir.